All right, guys, we're gonna keep going with the uh, lightning theory here on this truck. Uh, I'm pretty convinced it's lightning. You guys might not be yet, but uh, yeah, a lot of you are commenting, thinking you should see uh, some kind of witness marks or something like that. But I'm here to tell you, not always the case. Uh, sometimes, yes, you will see witness marks, uh, but sometimes it is an indirect hit, meaning the lightning just hit close to the vehicle. It didn't physically touch it. So, yeah, you can have lightning damaged vehicles that are not physically touched by the lightning. Um, funny story, probably about two and a half years ago now, maybe three years ago now, while I was at the dealership working, uh, we had two cars towed in uh, that the people claimed was a lightning strike. They drove them home, both vehicles drove them home. Uh, that night they had a lightning storm. They heard lightning hitting really close to their house, you know, real loud thunder booms. And uh, the next morning, neither vehicle would crank and run. So they had them towed in insurance called everybody kind of come together on these things um i had one vehicle it was either a envoy or a trailblazer i, I can't remember exactly what it, but they're the same body style basically the same truck it's about a 2007 8 model something around in there and the other one was a car I don't remember what kind of car. It was a newer one. It maybe even have been a Trax, like Chevy Trax. I, I just remember it was a, something a little bit newer. But anyways, the car or the other vehicle, the other tech looked at, no marks at all on it. Uh, couldn't find anything. The one that I looked at, uh, we ended up finding just a little bit of a spot on it and a hole in the side of the tire. The uh, tire, like you can stick your finger through the side of this tire, okay? And I diagnosed mine, figured out what all modules were bad, okay? The insurance adjuster come in. And this this is where we get into a funny story. The insurance adjuster come in and. Um, basically kind of went over the vehicle, went over the other vehicle, went over the vehicle I was working on, and uh, he was kind of just talking, and he was like, do you guys really think Lightning did this? And I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely, there's there's no, no denying, both of these vehicles dying on the same night with multiple module failures like this? definitely 100% lightning and he goes really I I thought tires were supposed to save you from that the rubber supposed to insulate it from the ground and me being me not a not really a people person I looked him straight in the face and I go that lightning come from like four or six miles in the sky down do you think it really gives a fuck about four inches of rubber? That's exactly how I said it. The other tech just shook his head, turned it down, and walked away before he died out laughing. And that poor uh, insurance adjuster just kind of stood there and his face just dropped. And he goes, uh, yeah, you got a good point there. <laughs> so let's get into the rest of this truck and figure out what else is wrong with it so i've got all these lin bus codes um i've took and wrote them all down but on the scan tool here you can see there's one two three four five of them uh that's what i've got wrote down a lot of people struggle with lin bus codes with GM because the code descriptions are pretty vague. Uh, lost communication with device on LIN bus and if you go out to your all data or any other service information, even GM service information, 
this is the same as what you find on all data. If you search one of these codes, we're just going to start with this uh, U1534. Uh, you're going to get some kind of generic troubleshooting things. Um, this does actually come up with power window malfunctions as a search, but when you go into this, it's like the generic uh, data communications, you're going to get, okay, is your code within this range of codes? Uh, yes, it is, because uh, 1534 comes before 15B because uh, they do numbers and letters and you basically get this same generic kind of test of test between the module setting the code and the device that is setting the code for but you don't really know what the device is you only know what module it is that is setting the code so if you actually go to this control module U code list, this is this is the key to doing U codes on GMs. You basically scroll down here and find our 1534. Let's see, let's keep going. 20s. 1534. Uh, K9 body control module lost communication with M74D window motor driver on LIN bus. So driver window. All right, so we're going to write that down. We know we, our windows don't work. And then we have a 1538 uh, window switch. So we've got a motor LIN bus and a switch LIN bus. So we've got codes for both. 133A, that is window switch passenger. And then we've got this 48, which is left rear LIN bus window switch. My handwriting's terrible. I'll show you guys this. This is why I use computer invoices, not handwritten invoices. <laughs> and 4A is right rear. So basically, we've got LIN bus for all four window switches plus the driver window motor. Why the driver window motor? Well, that might be the only one that's actually auto up and down maybe, or it could just be the only one that got killed. We don't know. So we will start with the driver windows side because we've got a motor code and a switch code and we can maybe test everything from there. We'll need to pull up a diagram for this LIN bus. We might have one thing taking all these down. And uh, so if I all four switches are on one limb bus all like connected together one of these can take all of them down so driver door is the one we're going to start with and uh here's some bonus for you guys look at that handwriting <laughs> i told you that's why i don't do handwritten invoices nobody can read it so let me get this driver door panel took apart and uh, we'll start checking the limb bus circuit. All right, so to start off, I've got the uh, limb bus diagram pulled up here and we've got our body control module here and we can see that we've got right here our right rear and left rear windows that do splice together and go to the body control module. And then we've got passenger window switch, driver window switch and driver motor all three spots together on this line going to the body control module. These very well could be connected inside the body control module or they could be separate. If they're separate then we've got issues on both lines but if they're connected internally then we could have just one thing bringing all five of these things down. So that's so what I'm saying you kind of got just pick a place to go. I can get two issues over here versus one on each other door. 
So that's the logical place for me to start is on that one. Plus it being with the uh, uh, motor, that's kind of high current area there. So who knows uh, what we'll find there. But uh, we could also back probe the uh, BCM connector with the scope and see what's happening right now with our limb bus before we take anything apart. Uh, see if we're shorted the voltage being high or shorted the ground basically pulling it low. Or we may have activity and then these modules may just be dead. So let's get that hooked up first and just see what our limb bus looks like. All right, so on our BCM here, we've got this pin 10 and uh, connector X6. It's a green and yellow. That's the one that's going to go to our driver motor, driver switch, and passenger switch. Down here at the body control module, you hopefully you guys can see that. I'm back probed into the uh, green and yellow wire there, pin 10. And uh, on our scope, we're short to ground. So, yeah. Do we have any voltage at all? Half a volt. Half a volt, yeah. We're short to ground, basically. So, to get lucky, hopefully we can start taking this door apart, watching this, and see if it ever comes up and starts communicating again. And if we're really lucky, it'll be after we unplug this switch, because I think that's one of the first things that'll come apart hopefully I think and I, I may end up having to take the whole door panel off before that unplugs I'm not sure yet but I think it comes out before the whole panel so let's start taking the door panel apart these things never come out terrible design So let's see if we're going to get lucky. I'm plugging our driver window switch. Nope, still shorted. Okay, carry on. And here's our motor. Hopefully we can unplug this and we'll get comms back. Maybe. Look at that. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We got communication. So now I need to plug the switch back up, see if uh, the switch is okay, or if we've got other issues we need to keep following. Uh, we can also rescan our BCM real fast and uh, see if the codes for the other side's cleared or not. So I'm just going to do clear fault code. We'll still have a loss com with this and the switch. All right, so I think we still got some issues. This limb bus ain't going to sleep, uh, so that means the BCM's not going to sleep. But I was able to get it to the point where. Uh, We've got key off. Let's read the fault code. We've only got one code setting right now. So let's crank it back up. Hopefully it's gonna retest everything and we will get different codes, hopefully. Sweet. We uh, have no limb bus codes now. <laughs> so still no, uh, Worky, worky. Yeah, still, still nothing working as far as windows go. Let's read these again. I've still got good data on my scope there. All right, now I've got some Limbus codes again. So, yeah, still all the same, same codes, same five codes. So now. I need to check powers and grounds to my my switch. If my switch has power and ground, every, you know, everything it needs to communicate. I've got limb bus at the BCM. I need to verify I've got limb bus here. And if we do, yeah, we've got a bad switch. 
So bad motor, possibly bad switch. So let's keep going. All right, got a diagram pulled up here and got my window switch here. Uh, my diagram says pin one should be black, which is my ground here. So I'm gonna take just one lead and go into my ground. And y'all know my light bulb stacked in with my leads trick so I can see voltage. Y'all like this trick. Uh, I did put these all on an Amazon store. It's linked down in the comments so you can find these things and uh, use them yourself. But uh, power is gonna be on pin four. So four over is a red with a violet stripe, yes. And there we go, we've got a light bulb, and I don't know if y'all can see the meter or not, but 13.4, 13.5. So that can carry current. Let's give it a little extra. Yep, bulb is bright. We're flowing good current. So verified good power and ground. Our diagram doesn't give any kind of ignition, only a um, limb bus. So, let me get my lead here off my scope. And that is five, a green and violet. So let's go into that one. And I know you guys can't see the scope. I'll take a screenshot of it for you. Four and five. Yeah, we got good data there. So. I'll show you. There you go. So, verified power and ground to the switch. Switch doesn't communicate. Switch is bad. So, confirmed bad motor because the motor had the limb bus shorted to ground. Uh, I will check the power and ground to that just to be 100% sure. And then I'll go through the rest of the switches and, and check all them. If I find something different, I'll bring you guys along, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna have four bad window switches and one bad motor. Well, I hope you guys are still enjoying this Chevy truck fiasco. I'm 100% convinced it's a lightning strike truck. There's too much stuff all over the place, burn up, bad, whatever. Um, there is still more to this truck. Unfortunately, I will be leaving for ASTE next week, uh, and we've got more parts coming for the truck. Um, and it might be after ASTE before I get back to it and uh, film the rest of it. But we're gonna keep going on with the truck. Uh, so just keep an eye out for more videos hit the notification button that'll help you know when videos of mine get posted and of course subscribing uh, will also help you know so thanks for watching everybody and uh, keep your eye out for more of this truck